Thank you for joining us for this very powerful documentary, 9-11 Press for Truth. You're watching KBDI Channel 12. My name is Sherry Bernson, and I'm joined by the, one of the producers from the film, Kyle Hentz. Welcome, Kyle. Good to be here. Good We've to got be here. the uh, Colorado 9-11 visibility people in the phones. And the reason this station is taking the risk of airing this documentary, we're the first broadcaster in the country to air this, is because of you. You know, we aired a documentary called Freedom to Fascism. Uh, we offered 9-11 Press for Truth. The DVD is one of the thank yous. And we got so much response from the community telling us that they wanted to see content of this nature. So right now, it's your chance to call in with your comments. It's your chance to call in with your pledges of support and we've got some great guests here and we're going to be giving you a lot of information during these breaks so Kyle tell us about this amazing film well this is a film that just had to be made this is a story that m had to be told because the American people deserve to know the truth about that fateful day and to this day we do not the 9-11 Commission failed the families and they failed this nation. And we felt that this was a compelling story. Um, it brought together pieces of their story that had never been told before and, and, and showed the Commission to be um, deficient, to be set up to fail in the words of the Chairman. The Chairman of the Commission himself said that the Commission was set up to fail. And it did. And we deserve to get to the bottom of what happened of that fateful day because the world has been turned upside down in the wake of those events. My name is Laura Van Auken. My husband Kenneth Van Auken was killed on September 11th um, at the World Trade Center. He was on the 105th floor of the North Tower, which was the first building that was hit and the second building to collapse. My name is Patricia Casaza. I lost my husband, John Casaza. He worked for Cantor Fitzgerald on the 104th floor of the first tower. My name is Mindy Kleinberg, and I lost my husband, Alan. He worked for Cantor Fitzgerald on the 104th floor. These women banded together after their husbands were killed, and now they're leading a campaign to find out exactly how did 9-11 happen. And finally, the media began to report on our activities um, not just the activities of the administration. Yes, I'm joined by Bob McElvain, our very special guest. Bob's featured in the film, and Bob, unfortunately, I'm so sorry, Bob, he lost his son, Bobby, 9-11, and we're so happy to have you here. And Bob's going to really share with us his story, and he's been doing so much work um, and was really involved with this project, but just n not from the get-go. You kind of became involved with the project. Yeah, well, it's, well, I just want to briefly mention Bobby. Um, he was a Princeton graduate and had just started working up at Merrill Lynch, which was right across the street from uh, the North Tower. And uh, that day he was murdered. And it took me, you know, you spend at least six months grieving. So, I, you know, I really didn't think about 9-11. And, uh, but then I started having questions. And, and I made every... 9-11 commission hearing and after those hearings especially when Condoleezza Rice uh, testified that's when my real anger comes out and I feel it's very important because I have so much anger I have an obligation my son was murdered and the information that we got from the commission was just bogus it was a fraud and so with that anger I've made it a, a mission that this is my job as a parent my son was murdered We've never, and, and I like everyone to put themselves in my position, that you have or I have an obligation to investigate my son's murder. And it's been a long, hard journey. A day like today is so emotional. I've been standing here crying because you're watching your son get murdered. That's, that's the bottom line. And that's brutal. And that's why so many people don't want to deal with it, because it is such a brutal, brutal day. I want to be in the way of some of these families. I mean, they're... <laughs> Kissinger was soon replaced by Tom Keene, a former New Jersey governor, and former Congressman Lee Hamilton, who had chaired the House Intelligence Committee. The remaining eight commissioners were all former D.C. insiders and lawyers, evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. Remember in the 90s, they spent a hundred million dollars investigating Clinton's sexual exploits. A hundred million dollars! and they first allocated only $3 million to investigate the murder of 3,000 people.
Now at 1-800-690-5234 or log on to kbdi.org. We've got some great thank you gifts for you if you'd like to increase your pledge of support. At the $100 level for the year, you're going to receive both the director's cut with unseen footage in this broadcast as well as what ended up on the cutting room floor and is it even a longer DVD in their own words at the $100 level. At $150 for the year, you'll receive both of the DVDs plus the new Pearl Harbor Revisited. It's a soft cover book. We'll be telling you a little bit more about that and at 200 for the year it's the two DVDs and a, a DVD that really looks at the physical evidence of 9-11 blueprint 9-11 and a fabled enemies DVD from the director of loose change these are thank you gifts for you that were actually suggested to us by our members and our viewers so get on the phone right now so much great information and in fact right now we're offering you these great thank you gifts so you can do your own investigation you know do your own study take responsibility for getting out and finding out about the information that uh, really matters to you so we've got Ray uh, he's here the director is here with us and he's over with the Rebecca Stevens let's go there thanks so much Shailen. Kyle and Sherry this is Ray Nov Novoselsky who is the director of 9-11, Press for Truth. Ray, how has this project affected you? I, Ray is only 28 years old, but this has to have changed your life. Yeah, well, it's it's played to uh, over 10 million viewers uh, overseas on, on foreign TV. Um, so we've gotten sort of recognition all around the world. Strangely enough, here in the U.S., you guys are the first broadcast outlet to touch it, so we do want to thank you for And for we're doing honored that. to have you show up here and be able to be with us tonight. Now, you flew in from Los Angeles, if right. I can say that. Tell me a little bit. You're also working on a new project. Tell me about your new project as well. Well, we're trying to find the funding. We've been developing this for over a year, and we've been pitching various outlets. It's called Footnote 44. And it kind of picks up where this one left off in a way. On the morning that the 9-11 Commission report uh, was released, the 9-11 family members that you see in the movie were brought in for a special sort of sneak preview of the book before public consumption. And on that day, uh, they knew that after they left that, they were going to be asked by reporters immediately, you know, what, you know, what do you think of the book? What do you think? So they were feverishly flipping through it. And Kristen Breitweiser, one of the Jersey Girls, right. tells the story where she just happened to have flipped open the first page she found she looks 44th footnote to chapter 6 and what they find is something they'd never seen before which is that the CIA deliberately in January of 2000 was aware that two 9-11 hijackers two al-Qaeda terrorists were coming to the country and they hid that from the FBI amazing. so it's a search for that amazing Bob yeah, I, I just wanted to mention or talk about press for truth um, you just can't believe how many people and I'm talking worldwide I remember when we first made it, I forget what, you know, it was a few years back. But my relatives, when I first mentioned something about 9-11, they all looked like at me, I was nuts. And there's a lot of information that we've given you. And it's really too much to take in. Well, Press for Truth sort of does that for you. Again, I've given it to my relatives. And they've looked at it, and the only thing that it did in the beginning is that they, they began to question. And that's all I would want out of this, is the fact that, just don't believe me. I mean, I do my own thing. You know, this is, for, this is for me. This is my transformation. But Press for Truth will just give you, uh, hopefully, those little things that you will say, geez, there is doubt about 9-11. And then maybe you will look into it. And the more people look into it, the better this country will be, as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you, and thanks to all of the great folks who have called in with their comments. Um, if you have other comments, you can log on to kbdi.org, click on Community, click on Viewer Buzz. Everybody who works here at the station reads those comments that come in via the email. And, you know, we're here for you. We're Thanks for acknowledging and noticing that, that we're really trying to do something different here at the KBDI studios. And what about the local groups? Thanks. Yes, the, well, the, we've got to thank the Colorado 9-11 Visibility Group. Thank you so much, Kyle. Let's give them a hand. Uh, Fran Schur, Earl Stalen have been on with us during these breaks right now. This group has helped us uh, bring these distinguished uh, guests uh, into the Colorado community. They're putting them up. They're shuffling them to the airport. Um, it's really because of them that we've, uh, that we've been able to bring this to you. So it looks like they're counting us out right now. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We thank couldn't you. have done it without thank you. you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your great work.